Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world. While it is expanding into new realms, it is based on the foundation of the late great Dolores Cannon's work. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions and new worlds. Also, thank you to Greg Prescott. And Michelle Walling at N5D.com for making this show possible. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material. I am a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at newearthjourney.com. And I'd like to mention I'm offering my own new quantum healing service available remotely. Call or email me about how we can create your very own unique quantum healing process. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method of quantum healing, You may find these wonderful people at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. That's DoloresCannonQHHT.com. Not only will you find photo listings there, but a practitioner blog and some other useful information for those interested in Dolores' work. Also, if you would like to participate live on the show tonight, please call this number, 646 716-8890, that's 646-716-8890. And since our topic is dreaming and dream interpretation, we invite any listener to call in to tell us about the dreams you might have had. Today is January 29th, 2016, and this is the very first Quantum Healing with Candace Dreamscape show. And I personally believe that the topic and the exploration of dreams is one of the most important subjects there is for all of us. And I hope that this program will be just the first of many where we explore the dreamscape's power and potential. Dreaming is the most commonly recognized means that the inner mind communicates to the outer mind. The idea that dreams are a communication from beyond the physical existence is not new. For thousands of years, mankind has been captivated and perplexed by memories of experiences arising when his physical consciousness is at rest. And these memories have become an integral part of every culture on this planet. Dreaming is a universal human language. It's basically your higher self speaking to you. So we're going to talk about all of that tonight. And joining me this evening to chat about this amazing subject is friend and colleague, fellow quantum healing practitioner, Nicole Radke. Nicole Radke is a holistic healer and hypnotist with a mission to treat the body, mind, and soul as one. She has a private healing practice in St. Joseph, Missouri called Natural Pathways. 
And Nicole was on a previous Quantum Healing with Candace show last November, and I'm happy to welcome her back to talk about one of our favorite subjects, the dreamscape. Welcome, Nicole. Good evening, Candace, and I'm going to say hi to everybody else out there, and I'm really excited to be back. Oh, I'm so happy that you're back as well. You know, I think Nicole, wasn't it you and I after we finished with our last show last November? It was after the show we just started talking about about dreams together, and I said, "Hey, we should do a show about that." And uh, that's kind we of did. how this came about. We did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, if so I remember, we thought we would, yeah, yeah, we thought we would just talk about you know the basic. Most people talk about dreaming, the different kinds of dreams there are, maybe some resources and books. Etc. Um, and then we thought we would talk about specific dreams, maybe some of our own favorite dreams, or, and or have you all call in, or possibly even, uh, you know, talk about things in the chat room where we could talk about some of your dreams that you might want to have um, uh, interpreted or have our idea uh, of what we think they could possibly be about. But you know. I'd like to start out by just talking about that at first, which is dreams are highly individual. Um, Absolutely. They, they, the, the, the symbology in dreams can be universal. They absolutely can be. You know, and, and we talk about some of the things, some of the symbols and some of the ways dreams can be thought about. Um, you know, people talk about what, for instance, water means in dreams or what. Yeah different animals or different things, but you, you can have your very own personal uh, symbology in, in your dreams. For instance, um, you know, I absolutely love animals and I absolutely love cats and dogs, etc. So a cat or a dog in my dream may, you know, be considered a friend or a companion mm-hmm. or something like that coming in and helping me out. But if somebody, say, had a very awful experience with a dog, maybe, a, you know, a dog hurt them terribly or mauled them, you know, unfortunately in their life or whatever, well, a dog in that person's dream, you know, may symbolize something completely different. So Absolutely. where we can talk about analyzing and interpreting dreams on, on a scale in that way, it you know, it doesn't always match. Would you say no. that, Nicole? Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, symbolism and dream interpretation is an essential part of of your life. You spend a third of your life asleep, a third of your life in, in the dream world. Um, and so there are some universal symbolism that we use, but I kind of look at it as something to get you started so that you can develop your, your own symbolism and understand your own dreams that way. But ultimately, it's about trusting your own intuition, too. So what does that dream mean to you? Because it is very personal in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What's helpful sometimes is if another person were to interpret your dream or if you you know had a, a dream book or something like that, it gives you a different perspective of looking at it. So for me, it's always about being practical, is what's the most simplest explanation for the whether it's the the scene or what's happening in the dream, um, but we definitely overthink it way too much. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and dreams can be both both literal or symbolic, and and sometimes yeah. you really have to uh, you know think about that. And actually, I've got a an interesting. Um, dream about this show, uh, this Quantum Healing with Candace show. I actually, a, a week before I was um, offered to uh, host this show, I had this really amazing dream, and I dreamed I was walking through my parents' kitchen, and suddenly I felt something in in my insides, in my belly, and I'm just, I'm just yeah. walking through my parents' kitchen, and I reached down and I actually give birth. I give birth to yes. a kitten. And um, and it really it surprises me to no end, uh, but I absolutely felt it came outside of me. I, I'm a mother, so I, I know this. Yes. <laughs> I know what it's like to give birth. <laughs> and I gave birth to this kitten, and I was, 
I caught it before it hit the floor and, and I held it up and I looked at it and I was so incredibly surprised and so incredibly happy. And I love cats anyway, but I had this dream. And when I woke up the next day, I thought, well, that's really interesting. And um, it was, it was very poignant and I knew it kind of meant something So, you know, somebody might think, well, it means, um, you know, you're going to have a kitten come into your life. Well, that might have been kind of literal, but that's not exactly it at all. What happened was I happened to be exactly a week uh, after I had that dream. I was in my parents' home chatting with uh, the lovely Michelle Walling when she said, hey, I have an idea. I think you should have your own show. (laughs) And that's That's where... That's where the dream came in. So it was, you yeah. know, it was, you know, giving birth is 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 a symbol often for being creative, you know. Yeah. And I was in my parents' home, and that's where I got kind of this news. I happened to be chatting with her again while I was in my parents' home. Yeah. And it just really, really fit, and um, it was a kind of a fun dream. Yeah. Have you <laughs> figured out what, what the kitchen and the cat represented to you? Well, um, you know, the cat, since the cat was a kitten and it was really small, and I adore cats, uh, yeah, I mean, the kitten was, you know, the radio show, and it was, it was such a surprise, and, you know, and it was all, all me and all mine, and I, yeah. meaning, you know, it, 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 it stands, yeah. it's created from, from my in, well, inners, and, and yeah. a lot of it had to do with kind of where it all happened, and a couple of the shows had happened uh, while I'd been yeah. in my parents' house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting. The first thing that came to mind when you said, you know, talked about the cat is, well, cats uh-huh. are known to have nine lives and you work with cat uh-huh. lives. Um, right. You know, and, and typically a kitchen would represent uh, food and we would look at food symbolism, symbolism as knowledge. Um, it's information. So it's very relevant, not just what was happening, but also where it was happening in the dream. Exactly. And not only that, I mean, I'm in the middle of walking. So, uh, you know, I'm moving. I wasn't standing yes. still. Um, it was mid-stride. Yeah. I was busy doing other things, and it just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it just it matched. It fit every every yeah. way you looked at it. So, uh, I love that. So, yeah, well, I, well you know, yeah. kind of jumped I into think your dream, dream interpretation <laughs> right away. But I didn't really kind of mean to do that, but it just seemed yeah. like it fit. <laughs> Well, it's probably where they want to take us. Um, I just, I think a lot of times dreams like that is, it's like deja vu. It's that same feeling. It's just a confirmation that wherever you are in your path, that things are moving along. Um, mm-hmm. I think that uh, there's so many different ways of looking at dreams and different cultures, but I think if you think of it as in terms of your life path, um, we're constantly learning and adjusting. So to me, Dreams are not just something that I do when I'm asleep. To me, it's a different reality. It's a different world. It's uh, it's multidimensional, and we go and we explore other things. We gather that information. We bring it back and adjust whatever we need to adjust. It's just another form of learning to me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And have you not uh, heard about those uh, societies, Nicole, uh, some indigenous ones. I believe in South America mm-hmm. there's, there are some societies that the village will wake up in the morning, they will gather yes. around, and they will share their dreams, and they will base their day's activity upon, uh, you know, the knowledge that yes. the people brought back from the dreaming world the night before, which yes. I just find astounding at, as far as how it compares to the Western notion of often just dismissing dreams as frivolous or meaningless. Yes. Yeah, especially I, um, what I'm, the part I'm familiar with, with, with the, um, in Australia with the uh, Aborigines. Um, actually, our dream cycle or our sleep cycle is not supposed to be 8 to 10 hours. Um, what they're known for is they would usually go to sleep when it's sundown, they would sleep for three or four hours. They would wake up, and they would interpret each other's dreams. They would go back to sleep for the same amount of time. They would get up in the morning and interpret dreams again. Um, and I actually hmm. learned that in one of the books that of an author we just discussed before through Robert Moss. And mm-hmm. I think that sometimes if people wake up in the middle of the night and 
they just, you know, why can't I go to sleep or why am I not, I, you know, whether you call it insomnia or I think there's a, a purpose to being in that quiet space where you can then reflect on whatever dreams you have or meditation. Um, it's not that you're just asleep and the rest of you that nothing's going on. Um, <laughs> it's almost to me as if you're waking up and when you come mm-hmm. back, this is the dream world here. <laughs> That's yes, that's definitely a way of looking at it. And there's so many different kinds of dreams, aren't there? I mean, we have, um, you know, dreams where uh, they really are precognitive. They can they can predict or give you hints about what might be coming down the road. Uh, my yes. kitten dream, of course, was was one of them. Um, there, you know, there are some very literal dreams, very symbolic dreams. There are dreams where people who have passed come to visit you. And that's an amazing after-death communication um, type of place where, where, this, where this can happen. And I've been yeah. very it's uh, real. fortunate myself to, to be able to experience that uh, many times and and it's such a comfort uh, to be able to do that. And um, and there's dreams where you literally go in the past lives. You yes. find yourself in past lives or past situations working on perhaps themes that you may be working on through throughout lifetimes. You know, uh, if you're in battles or something over and over again, yeah. it, it could be that, that you're in a battle just in your office workspace or in your home mm-hmm. life, but, but it could possibly mean that, you know, that's that's part of your soul plan and your soul understanding across lifetimes. There's lots of different Absolutely. ways to look at dreams. Yeah, there's so, there's so many different levels. Um, some people are, are very aware of their dreams, so they call that lucid dreaming. Um, a lot of people feel that they don't dream at all because they don't remember their dreams. Um, and what I learned fairly early on, it, it doesn't matter if you remember them or not because you're still having an experience. You're still dreaming anyway. So the one thing that I would want people to take away from this is, especially if you look at dreams that you feel kind of foretell the future, um, especially if they're scary, that there is no dream that you have to be afraid of. There's, there's even the ones that seem really scary or what, that we would consider nightmares. For me, those are the ones where the most work is being done, um, the most things are being released or integrated. Right, and there's places where you have to face your fears. Um, yeah, or rather you know, you, that in my dreams. To, then do right, right, you have, right, you have to turn and look at that monster square on and deal with that, uh, you know, if, if it is a monster, of course, and deal but with it in your dreams. Practice. But if you, you – go ahead. It's also practice in a way for those things. So even if something does seem scary, uh, there's, a, there's a, a safety aspect of about exploring the different outcomes in the dream. Um, and it, so, so much of it happens subconsciously, but it does help you in your relationships the same way that we explore through QHHT um, and connecting with the subconscious in that way. It's just another way of communication from your subconscious. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, we talk about that a lot on our support forum, and I know that you and I probably talk about that a lot with our clients in the same way when we have QHHT sessions, that, you know, having a QHHT session is an awful lot like having a dream. And so if you, you know, find yourself practiced in dreaming or daydreaming, it it can really help you if if and when you want to explore in, in that way, if you want to explore your consciousness in that way. Well, tell me what you know about Robert Moss. Well, I was introduced to him through a friend of mine, um, and I read his book, and off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of it because I don't have it with me right now. Um, But basically, he was just talking about the the anatomy of dreams, how to begin to interpret your dreams. Um, I did have the opportunity to actually correspond with him a little bit on Facebook once um, about some dreams. And he's a he's a very interesting, very intelligent guy, and with uh, he just has to me has a very fresh perspective on dreams, um, but in a way also using those old ancient techniques, and um, 
just really, I kind of, I kind of think of it as like helping you to understand your own internal language, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then to actually have whatever healing you need to take place. He he has really good exercises. So for me, he makes it very practical, which that's something that I like. It's not just, mm-hmm. well, here's the dream symbolism. This is what, uh, you know, it might or might not mean. But here's how you can actually change your dreams. This is how you can go back into your dreams. So his, his suggestions that he has is really powerful. He really brings a lot of validity to the experience of, of the dream yeah. where the Western world kind of, you know, shrugs its shoulders and, and, and minimizes it and says it's not that important. I think it's vitally important, uh, your dreams. And those people who say they don't remember their dreams, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and why don't you tell me what you think some of those reasons are, Nicole, and, and let me well, see I if, think... if I can fill in. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what kind of reason do today? we not remember our dreams? <laughs> the first one that I would always consider is, you know, are you on any kind of medication that would maybe make you sleep uh, more intensely or that might affect your dreams? Uh, that's definitely a factor. Um, but then other than that is if if you're so busy and you're so tired uh, just from day-to-day living and, and work and kids and all these things, it could be that you – your physical body is just sleeping so deeply that you just don't remember the experience. Um, other factors could be that um, maybe you're not supposed to remember what you dreamt, mm-hmm. you know, because can you integrate the information <laughs> back into into your psyche? Um, you know, there's so many different things from a psychological aspect to chemical uh, to spiritual aspect to, and I, I think a, your belief system. Uh, can kind of interfere with some of that too. If if you have a very particular belief system and you're maybe afraid of your dreams or you, if you've had a lot more nightmares, those kind of things, it could be that there's a fear factor involved there too, either subconsciously or... But um, if you think about... Um, and actually, there's ways that that I've been able to help people to, to like, kickstart their dreaming. If you mm-hmm. become more self-aware, you know, through meditation or just living more more conscious lifestyle, you'll begin to experience more facets, more aspects of yourself. So it could also be an indicator of where you are in your self-development too. So you're not going to be overwhelmed with information. Does that mm-hmm. does that make sense? Is that kind of along the lines Absolutely. of what you might think? Absolutely. I I know for myself personally, dreaming is so important to me that um, the the nights or the mornings that I wake up that I might not remember my dreams, they feel very strange to me. I don't like it at all. It's very disconcerting. But I do have I do have those those nights. But a lot of people will say I don't dream. But I pretty much when I hear that statement say, well, just because you don't remember them. Uh, doesn't mean that you're not having them. I, I do believe that, you know, to remain healthy and walking upright on the planet, you you kind of have to sleep and have to have uh, the dream sequence go on, whether or not you believe or yeah. remember it at all when you when you get you know back into consciousness awareness. Yeah, no, I absolutely I absolutely believe that that everybody dreams, and uh, mm-hmm. you know I think that's just kind of your soul's way of. of checking in on yourself too uh, there's dreams i've had that i wish i didn't remember <laughs> my husband always gets in trouble for that one uh you know he has dreamed in that's him whole different character um but i think the more you want to explore who you are the more it will be revealed to you um in the beginning i used to be so obsessed with interpreting every dream and journaling it and writing it down uh, and it got too much because they were so detailed that I would write for an hour every morning if I if I had to do that every day. <laughs> so what I've noticed is the ones that I really have to remember or that's important, I'll remember years afterwards. They'll, they'll yeah. just, there's some that just kind of stand out. So I just I don't worry about it too much. But um, if I wake up and I feel okay, this was an, an important dream, then I would, I would start looking at it a little more and maybe bounce it off a friend or so. 
But um, mm-hmm. I had a, an interesting dream. You know, you mentioned that your kitchen dream. I had a kitchen dream as well a few weeks ago. And um, I've kind of been on this kick to be healthier, to you know, kind of cut uh, red meats and um, all the bad stuff out of my diet. And I was eating can well, too much candy, got a headache. And a couple days later, I had this dream. I was in a house, not my house. And there were people coming to look at the house because there was supposed to be some paranormal activity. And long story short, there's one part of the dream I ended up in the kitchen. And I walk in and there's this woman lying on the ground. And her head looks like she has a head injury. I'm I'm grabbing the phone. I'm calling 911. And there's Mm -hmm. another lady trying to help me. And the next moment I look down and instead of a person, she... She's a candy bar, and I'm unwrapping <laughs> the chocolate bar. And I'm very lucid in the dream because I'm thinking, okay, what, this, this is weird. What's going on? Uh, and as I get her unfolded, I, I look back down again, and I, she is a grilled tomato sandwich. I can see the tomato slices with the seeds and everything in it, which is probably one of the strangest dreams I've had. But <laughs> when I started analyzing When I started analyzing it, I knew that food meant information. Um, I knew that what types of food was important. And I knew that immediately the first thing that stood out to me is that chocolate for me causes migraines. So I knew that they were trying to tell me something about my headaches. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was really about information, yeah. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, as I looked down at the tomato sandwich, I – the 911 operator answered, and I said, oh, no, it's okay. She's fine. Um, <laughs> but interesting, when I started researching that, there's actually a link between tomatoes and chocolate. They have the same enzyme that is said to create migraines. So interesting. I cut tomatoes out of my diet, and my headaches have gone away. So Interesting. But I would and never have put two and two together, <laughs> you know. No. No, and and you said it was a house, but not your house. So, how, what do you what do you make of that symbolism? Yeah. Well, to me, to me, a house is if it's my house and it's either someplace that I feel safe or it's it's my territory, you know, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody else's house would just be uh, unf- unfamiliar territory. So maybe mm-hmm. in a way, you know, if we think about the head, the head has to do with your consciousness. So maybe in a way I'm trying to expand my consciousness. This is why it was paranormal, because it's unknown. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe even a little bit of fear in there. So maybe I have a fear about expanding my mind. Uh, perhaps that was part of why I was getting headaches, uh, was just the mm. intensity of, of information or, or the energy. Um the not to me the nine one one would symbolize that I'm trying to reach out for help. It doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that there's an emergency or that um, it's not necessarily a negative thing. Um, mm-hmm. So to me, you you can almost look at every single little aspect and just say, okay, what what if I take the the dream part away of it? What does that object mean? What does that scene mean? And then slowly you start putting the pieces together. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, to me it's more about, what you know, what level of the house. Because if it would be like down in the basement, that would represent your subconsciousness. It's it's what's beneath. Uh, On the main floor would be, you know, maybe a little more on the surface. The kitchen would then have to do with with information or with knowledge um so it's not it's not only important about you know what was happening but what is the whole picture the cohesiveness of all of it tell and i think that's the importance between dreams from night to night also (laughs) is because all in all it kind of creates this tapestry so you can even Mm -hmm. look at dreams uh a series of dreams and see overall what you know? What would those dreams tell you instead of just the individual ones? But there's all kinds of ways you can look at them. Yeah, and I want to remind our callers that we'd be happy to talk about your dreams too. If you want to call in, just press one when you call in, and we'll pick up the phone six four six seven one six eight eight nine zero in case anybody out there wants to talk about a dream that they've had. Um, you know, talking about Robert Moss, he's this 
famous um, author who has written, I think, 23 books or something like that, just an amazing a uh, prolific author. Uh, many of his books are about uh, dreaming. He he was a novelist before he got into some of this. But his story is so interesting, uh, primarily because he was a sickly child. He had two near-death experiences when he was um, just a kid. And some of this seemed to kind of set off his understanding and knowledge of, yeah. these, of these other worlds. But, um, but, Nicole and I are referencing him because he's he's written many books on dreaming and one of the one of the books that that he wrote that talks about in in particular or in part excuse me dreams is um a book that I reference a lot a lot especially to my newly awakened clients and um the name of that book is the three only things and um that references the onlys um of only it's only your imagination we hear that you know it's only a coincidence we hear that all the time and it's only a dream taking all of those things and marginally marginalizing them and making them seem insignificant but he he wrote that book um and uh it's just kind of a great introduction in, into his work but uh what's so interesting about this man is you know how much credence and um, validity he gives to these uh, there's many different worlds you can enter you know in your dreams that i mean That's and you true. can you can have shared dreams and you can go to other lives and you, there's so many different things it's yeah. not just this jumbled place where you only talk to your higher self it can be that but you can definitely yeah. travel can't you nicole that's Absolutely. I think that's just another way of creating. Um, you know, we, we know in a way that we create our reality here. Uh, the dream world is no different than that. Uh, you have, you can you can access parallel lives that way. You can mm-hmm. explore your creative abilities. Um, to me, it's, it's very, very real. And mm-hmm. it's just another facet, just another aspect of you. It, to me, it's... It, well, maybe you can look at it as like maybe different chapters of yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But I think the book that I read from him was Active Dreaming. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have that one. I think I have about three of his books on my shelf, and I, you know, I've read the three only things up and down, and um, but the others I've I've thumbed through, and I haven't I haven't. Um, uh, gotten to know them as well as that that one particular book. But what's really fascinating about about this guy, he has the story that in in one of his, um, and he calls it the near death experience. He actually was like bouncing around the uh, surgery. Um, oh yeah, I think I he had a first that. appendix or something. Yeah, and it's such a great story. But he's he's yeah. looking down and and it's all bloody by his body and he doesn't like looking at it and he goes and finds his mom in the waiting room you know he's left his body his consciousness is gone and she's looking really sad and and he's a kid and he's like well mom's here but she's sad oh well, I don't want to do that and he floats out the window and there's like an amusement park very near to this hospital and he goes and he kind of plays around in the amusement park for a while and then suddenly he meets these other beings and he doesn't know exactly what happens. He kind of, and I know this kind of moves into the near death experience realm, but you know, these, these places all just kind of cross, you know what I mean? It, there's yeah, a I don't lot think you can separate inter- them. Intersecting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the interesting part about this is this guy, he says he ends up kind of being adopted. Now, I mean, just listen to this. Adopted by this other family in this other realm, and he lives decades and has a family, children, Mm. grandchildren, lives to be a ripe old age into his 90s or even his 100s in in this other world. And then when he passes away as this other Mm. person, he wakes up and it's the next, uh, you know, day after the surgery of his appendix as a child. I mean that's just crazy. <laughs> it, it, it's it's amazing, but to me it doesn't sound strange, really. Maybe it's because I'm so used to you know talking about all the things that we do. But 
Um, there, it reminds me of Ishtak Bentov, who was, uh, I believe, is a physicist in the 70s, um, and he explained something that would kind of fit into that. What seems like maybe moments here or a day here, time is not the same. In, in you know, outside of of this experience that we have, time is very different, and maybe even non-existent in other places. So, who's to say that wasn't a full life? And when he came back, to me, that is like the dreaming, like the waking up into this lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he dreamt in that other life that you know, maybe it was a dream within a dream. Um, it mm-hmm. can get pretty convoluted, but the, I just I know that anything is possible, and. To me, that's the the part of the creative ability too, and living almost like two lives simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. know, you explore something else, came back, and okay, we'll we'll continue this story here, and then when I leave here, I'll go and have another story. But I don't think you can separate um, the the different realms, whether it's dream or near death. It's it's everything is so connected together, and, and we're a part of everything, and everything is a part of us. So we can only understand by separating it um, and, and individualizing it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all just consciousness, right? So the consciousness, yeah. you know, is just traveling kind of in different ways, you know, with different connections and in different um, realms. Yeah. I had a client once come come to see me, and she one of those clients who says, you know, I, I can't tell anybody this because they, they'd lock me up and it's true. There's, yeah. You know, there are people who are in institutions who, you know, just share too much with psychiatrists or doctors and, and all kinds yeah. of things happened after that. But this particular woman would go to sleep some night and she would wake up a completely different person, a, another woman who lived in another city with another family, a different children, a different career, different everything, different body, yeah. different all of that. And yet she was aware of both lives. And um, she said it, it's all, it always took her about a day to, you know, to remember to, to switch over to be the next person, you know, this other person where she had a different name and a different career. Yeah. I think she was a stay-at-home mom in one in one uh, life and or pretty much and then the other life she was she was like this you know businesswoman carrying a briefcase and and one it, they were very different lives one was more rural yeah. one was more urban and then she would live that life for a while and sometimes it would be a few days sometimes it would be a few weeks sometimes it would be you know even several months and she'd get so used to that life, she'd go to sleep then in that life and yes. then wake up back in the first life. And then there'd be no time that would have passed for the first person. So it, she yeah. may have, you know, gone and spent months being the second person. And then she comes yeah. back and she's the first it's, person again. And it took her a day then. again. <laughs> she said, it always takes me a day <laughs> to remember who she is. And she says, yeah. you know, I, I, am I crazy? And it's well, it's a very unique story. But I, you know, I said, I don't think you're crazy at all. I think you're being yeah. multidimensional. Uh, yeah, no, I would totally agree with that. And and how, um, to me, that's kind of a gift to be able to remember all of that. And you know, obviously, she can still function in whatever life mm-hmm. she's recalling. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's interrupting her in any way. But I remember a couple of years back there was a story actually in mainstream media uh, where a woman had a similar experience. Just she woke up and it was a different life, different family, different job. And uh, I think it happens more often than than we probably admit. Uh, I have so many people that walk in and say, oh, my gosh, I have the craziest dreams. And I'm like we're all having them. <laughs> Everybody's dreams seem kind of you know weird and strange, so you know you don't have to fear them. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. It, it's all quantum. You have to look at it from quantum physics to to really understand the, the time associated with it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had Nicole any um, dreams that have connected you with information or in other ways to to any clients that you might have had? Um, oh, absolutely. I've I've had several. Uh, well, there's one that's really interesting. 
when I first started doing QHHT, I would have a dream probably about two days before I would see my clients. And I had one particular one where I dreamt I was uh, on a street looking at a house, and there was a man that, that drove into a driveway. Um, but it was very animated in a way that he had dynamite, and he blew the car up. But <laughs> when the client wow. came in, what was really interesting is her dad actually owned a dynamite company uh, for like almost 50 years. And um, and I believe he had passed some time uh, a few years prior to that. But, yeah, that was his business. That was his job. That was his, his work. I don't know why I had the dream, but I think it was just as I was busy connecting with her. And it also shows you that right. you start resonating with people much earlier than when you just walk into their presence. Um, so that was a pretty interesting one. She was really surprised when I told her I had this dream. And then I had another one that actually helped with information on um, in finding a body. Um, I had a dream that I was um, I had a dream I was in Germany and uh, I can't remember all the specifics of the dream, but basically I was going up the river and I was looking for somebody and uh, I kept seeing beer bottles, but. Um, what stood out about the dream is how things kept floating up to the surface and the, what the terrain looked like. And I was talking to a friend who had um, somebody that she knew, a uh, boy had drowned and they, they didn't find the body. And um, But, you know, just comparing notes between between everybody, they were able to look in a place that looked similar to what it looked like in the dream um, and they actually found the body. So you never uh, know. You, you you don't know when the information, you need to share it, who do you share it with. I don't think you can really worry about that. If it's a, if you're supposed to connect with somebody else with it, it's going to happen anyway. You know, you're going to talk to them or you're going to get the information to them without you having to worry about doing it. But mm-hmm. a lot of times we dream things about other people, um, especially if it's, you know, if, if you dream that, well, somebody's going to be in an accident or things like that. And those can sometimes be a precursor to something happening. But I think the first thing you need to remember is the dream, your dream world is the same as your, your waking life. It, it's about you. It's an mm-hmm. aspect of you. So you have to look at, you know, if you dream about your mother, uh, you know, what would your mother represent? It might be your, your the reality of your mom, but it can also represent, you know, the nurturing of yourself. So you always want to look mm-hmm. at that aspect first, especially if a dream scares you. Take the, the the emotion part out and then just look at, well, in relation to me, what would this mean? Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think it's the more I've, you're kind of tuned in with people, that will happen. I've heard that one way of doing that is uh, by kind of retelling the dream without using uh, you know, without using kind of the nouns of what it is and just, uh, you know, what what things feel like, you know, if it's a yeah. car, well, it's something that's moving me or something, you know, like that. So it's not the object. Yeah. You kind of, you, you have to remember that the object isn't always really what it is. It, it, it's just the, um, it's, it's the meaning behind it, you know. So, yeah, there's so many different incredible ways. I had a, a, client, a client once, Nicole, and this was not a QHHT client. It was somebody who uh, was interested in, um, um, in a core process and basically, a, you know, a meditation visual process. He was having some physical issues. He, he was not interested in doing a, a, a QHHT session, but he wanted to talk about uh, – uh, you know, how he could help heal his body. He was having some terrible digestive problems, just some really yeah. severe digestive issues. And and I really love uh, the fact that um, uh, how my dreams played into helping this particular fellow because, you know, he said he just couldn't figure it out and he'd uh, been to all these doctors and he didn't know what else to do. So he's contacting me because, um, you know, he's looking for some energetic um alternative way of trying to help himself and 
and so he was telling me that and then we we set an appointment for the following day to to talk more on the phone and and I happened then that night to have a dream about this person. And I dreamed that uh, we were talking on the phone, but I could see him. And he opened up his mouth, and all of these worms came out of his mouth. I mean, just, just worms, yes. big worms came out of his mouth. And, um, and it was kind of horrifying, um, but I also knew that it was very important and, and in the most delicate way possible the next yeah. day. I, you know, I talked to him about this dream. I'm like, look, you know, I, I think this could be important. And, and when I told him about it, I said, you know, have you been checked for parasites? And at yes. first he started, he started to, um, he started to poo-poo what was going on there, and and you know what? He suddenly remembered that he had been in Mexico uh, several months prior, and there was a, a flood, and he was caught in some floodwaters, and he wow. never ever ever put the two together that being caught in these floodwaters could have anything to do with his digestive system. And yeah. with that information, it kind of it made him think about what what happened, and, and that he'd yeah. gone through that, and he had never mentioned that to his doctor. And he went back and had additional testing because of knowing, you know, being in that situation could have exposed him to to some pathogens that you know, uh, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. could have. And it was exactly what happened. He got back to me a few weeks later, and he said, "I can't, be, you know, believe that your dream." is the yeah. thing that helped me figure out what was wrong with my gut. But it was. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, it, it, absolutely. That's 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 so amazing. Um, you know, obviously you were in the right place at the right time, and, and he was. Um, you know, he m- might not even have thought about that any other way. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah, I think there's so much healing that, that happens, uh, you know, in situations like that. But... Um, mm-hmm. What's some of the experiences you've had with, uh, where where do you think people have trouble with interpreting their dreams from your perspective? Well, um, my perspective, it seems that, you know, uh, after the, the initial or often said idea of I don't remember my dream, uh, if you, once you pass that, the next thing that most people say is, well, they're, they're just jumbles. You know, they don't, they don't seem to make any sense. And then they just dismiss them. And, uh, you know, I think that's a very common way of yeah. looking at some of the dreams that they've had. But, if, you know, it's, it's, that's such an easy out. You know, it, it, once you really start talking to some people about what they mean, you know, they're not like a movie. They're not like a no. television show. You really have to look at them, you know, with a more thoughtful, um, you know, mm-hmm. approach. And and mm-hmm. so a lot of people will say they just don't make any sense. They couldn't possibly make any sense. But when you start talking to them about, well, you know what? Where are you normally? Are you in your body? You know, does it feel like you? Mm-hmm. And are you normally with people? Or are you normally? You know, what's going on? And and when you yeah. start asking some of the basic questions, it, you know, it all kind of comes out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think that I, I I would totally agree with that. Um, I think that people jump the gun, and they they mm-hmm. look for some very deep inspirational meaning uh, when it's really just very obvious and, and on the surface. Those dreams that kind of seem like they're jumbled together, I would look at them as, as maybe individual dreams. You know, again, take each part and, and separate them out. And then afterwards, you can look at the big picture together. Um, mm-hmm. But it's definitely a journey like everything else. The the more you look into it, the more you'll understand it. Um, mm-hmm. I think that I think that your dreams are it's a great way of just exploring it's just exploration too. Uh mm-hmm. every night mm-hmm. before I go to sleep I am absolutely excited for my dreams because <laughs> I know that I know I'm going to experience something or go something somewhere um that maybe I haven't been before and um mm-hmm. I just set that dream intent 
I think that made the biggest difference yes. in my dream is just setting the intent to dream. Um, yes. And now I don't even have to do it consciously anymore or setting the intent to remember the dream when you wake up. It just kind of sends that message out there that, okay, I'm ready for more. You know, Give me more. I can handle it. That's a really good thing for all of our listeners to, to take away. If you, if you haven't, you know, set your intention to remember your dream, it, it may sound kind of pat. It may sound like, well, that can't really work, but oh my gosh, it just does. And, and if you even go so far as to on a post-it note, just on a post-it note, you know, on your bathroom mirror, perhaps when you're brushing your teeth, you know, I, you know, I intend uh, uh, to remember my dream. You know, I intend to have that connection. It, it can really, really be helpful and bring bring you closer to understanding some of the deep things in, in your life and, and, and bring some excitement to your life as well. You know, one of the dreams that um, a lot of QHHT practitioners have are dreams of Dolores and the auditorium. Have you had any auditorium with Dolores dreams, Nicole? I haven't had the the auditorium dream, but I have had dreams where I would like hear her voice. Um, Mm -hmm. There was one in particular that stood out that uh, was really more like a daydream for me, but it was just very, very clear where I heard her say, uh, you know, don't forget about me, tell everybody about me. Um, (laughs) But it was just in, in such a way that, you know, this is important, keep going. Um, mm-hmm. But she shows up in our in our sessions all the time. You know, somebody would yes, have a message um, from her. So um, I mm-hmm. think she's kind of helping us steer steer from the other side. Um, Absolutely. But I think you. So I think you have to setting that intent before you go to sleep is important because if you go to mm-hmm. sleep and you're tense and you're tired and uh, you're kind of in a negative frame of mind, then you're not going in, into it with the right attitude and you're going to wake up and you're going to feel tired still. So it really mm-hmm. affects how you feel overall too. And, you know, you can program your dreams. You know, you, you, you don't even have to make it be, I just want to remember my dreams and then have it be willy-nilly. You can, you know, you can program your dreams to solve certain problems or to bring you clues and, you know, answers and have help in your lives. You can, you can ask for visitations from people who are alive or who are dead, you know, even yeah. or people from, from other, other lives, um, other worlds. You, you absolutely can do that and yeah. and you you may not find something happen right away but if you keep at it you'd be surprised what what can happen when you when you program yourself to have those kind of dreams yeah. some of the dreams well, you're that, you're in control um, yes yes you really are <laughs> and of course there's that control that the dreams where you have the most control are are the lucid dreams, and um, and they are a lot of fun. And most people have experienced at least uh, you know some vague sense of being lucid in dreams at least once yeah. or twice in their lives. And the lucky ones do it more often than that. Can you can you lucid dream very regularly, Nicole? Much more now than I used to be able to. And the way that I'm, that I recognize it is it's I'm aware of my thought process. So as I'm dreaming, sometimes I'm aware to dream, other times I'm not, but I'm aware that I'm thinking, that I'm observing Mm -hmm. and making decisions. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm not one of those lucid dreamers where I necessarily change the the situation or the scenery. I'm just very aware of the mental process. Although I did have one where I saw aliens coming out of the cornfield towards me (laughs) and they I just immediately in the dream became afraid, and I had a thought. I'm like, no, I don't have to be afraid. I can change this. You can change the way that they look. Uh-huh. So they had, uh-huh. like, one trench coat on, and they opened it up, and there were two stacks on top of one another. But <laughs> it just in the moment, they reminded me, no, you can change this. You know, it doesn't have to appear right. scary. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So um, I, go ahead. Oh, and the same, you know, when you set that intent before you go to sleep, you know, you're laying there, your eyes are closed. Why not make use of the time and begin your dreaming? Start thinking of something. Put yourself mm-hmm. in a situation or, you know, in some place that, that is, you know, kind of cool to be at. 
um, and, and mm-hmm. jump started that way. But it, mm-hmm. most people will find if they do that for a week to two weeks, they'll notice a difference in, in the way that mm-hmm. they dream and recall it. It mm-hmm. doesn't take very long. You really, you really do have more power over your dreams than than you might think. And uh, one thing that I like to think about uh, dreams is to think of them as a place to go for healing, uh, no matter what it is that's going on in your life or, or in your world where where you would, you know, uh, enjoy uh, some healing. You can, you know, you can create in your daydreams, you can begin to create thought forms that then you can go visit yes. in the dreamscape. It's, it's kind of like, you know, pre-building your dream during the day. And yes. um, which is, you know, another reason why I learned a long, long time ago uh, you know, I do not watch horror movies of any kind. I don't do anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> I mean, my my imagination is way too filled with I, stuff anyway. Yeah, and I that's why I don't I don't watch the news. I don't do any of that. And I, I truly am very blessed. I have very few, um, you know, scary or or, yeah. or awful dreams or nightmares. I did have them as as a kid. Uh, but I, yeah. I learned about my nighttime adventures so, so much so, you know, later on in my life, I, I, you know, I realized what affects them and what doesn't. So I, you know, I totally stay away from, from those kinds of, of, of things. But, um, but I really love the idea. I mean, you know, I, I've created this, this amazing healing. I, I have a whole healing island that I've created for myself over the years. And it's oh, got a dock that. and it's got, it's got a path. It's got, you know, a waterfall. It has a temple. And my temple is open air and there's all these incredible animals up there. And, you know, there's this, there's this bed that I can lay in that's kind of like a lounge chair, yeah. but it's kind of like a bed and it's, always you know i'm surrounded by by you know archangels and and other healers and you know i go there when i've got some sort of you know physical or other issue that that you know i'm i'm looking for help from you know my seen and unseen beings and and over the years you know i mean you know it's it's there's incredible uh consistency for me uh, by having this this place, you know, and and everybody can can make that. You know, you can have your yes. own healing place like that. Yeah, and it can be whatever whatever you want it to, whatever you need it to be. It can be that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I would like to you know kind of talk about some of the what some of the symbols typically mean in dreams to maybe get people you know thinking in that direction. Um, sure. You know, because for instance, I think about uh, cars, and so many, so many times we dream we're either in a car or, uh, you know, we're driving, or sometimes you drive and and you want to slow down and you can't brake or you can't accelerate. Um, if, if you think about a car, this is how I judge wh- whether there's a good dream book or not. Uh, as I flip it open, mm-hmm. and see what it says. So your car <laughs> is, is your vehicle. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that that's your body. It represents mm-hmm. your body. Um, mm-hmm. Then you can see, you know, are you in the driver's seat? Yes, I'm in control of myself. Uh, are you in mm-hmm. the passenger seat? Are you in somebody else's car? Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a good one to know. Very mm-hmm. practical. Then if a car is on the, on the road, this is a path, you know. You have to look mm-hmm. for the movement in the dream, what action is taking place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was a, a big switch for me once I started realizing that there's an action that happens in a dream, and I think Robert Moss talks about that too. Mm-hmm. It started revealing the the flow of the dream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think the vehicle easy. one is is perfect. I, I had a dream recently where I was driving my mother's car, and my mother's elderly, and she was in the passenger seat, and I'm driving mm. in her car, and of course that means you know she's. She's kind of handing over the care of her vehicle to me now because yes. of what's going on in her life and her world. So I think you're right. You know, the the vehicle yeah. is a is a big one. How about some yeah. others? I, well, I would also look at at yours as that as almost you helping her out in in her body. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, uh, exactly. kind of helping her navigate, uh, helping her <laughs> to to make whatever transition you know she's preparing for and all that you know in in the scheme of life. Mm-hmm. But, um, 
uh, you know, mm-hmm. the breaks too. Is sometimes you just feel like you don't have enough intensity behind it. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, what's another one that comes up fairly often. Um, water, water. What's water mean to you? Or oh, what, how do you think about okay. water? So a lot of dream books will say water represents emotion, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but I think that water represents consciousness. Mm-hmm. And um, you the like the amniotic fluid, that's how mm-hmm. I see it. It's, it's etheric, low. it's not necessarily level, but for me it represents con- consciousness outside of your physical body. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. when we talk about the higher self and that. When I think of emotions and dreams, um, I would m- much, um, oh, thinking of a different word, um, I think more in terms of seeing tornadoes, weather patterns. To me, that means more than emotions. But the water, to me, is it, it also conveys, it, it flows, it moves you. So it moves you from one point to another, which for me, that doesn't mean emotion. So, mm-hmm. um, that's the one I'm with thing you, that and especially most books. especially big floods too. You know, dreaming about big, big bodies of water coming through. I think yeah. that you know that really plays into our life and times with you know the raising of the consciousness on the planet. I think that's why a lot of people dream about I floods. Think, yeah, and I think you know that water is, is if you think about water, it comes in waves, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. we know that most. Uh, energy can be described as frequency or wave patterns. So it's much mm-hmm. more about the energy behind the dream or behind your life than than the emotional part of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, but you can definitely look at it both ways. It's not going to hurt anything. But I think thinking of it as a as a consciousness is is more helpful. Mhm. Mhm. And there's there's okay. those um, those very common mm-hmm. common dreams like uh, going to school and not being prepared for the test, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, school okay school dreams to me. Uh, let's see if I can make this easy. I see them as as overlaid dreams. So I think what really happens is you're actually being educated or being taught something, you're learning something on an energetic level that you, your physical brain has no way of interpreting what's happening. So you have to bring that information back and, and translate it um, to something that's known to you. And that's why we hmm. see it in, in, a school, in the school aspect. So literally you're being schooled. Um, if you're not prepared for it. So that's why you're having the dream is because you're being prepared. I would call those dreams where real work is happening. You're actually learning um, the same way as we learn here. But I don't think we can – so, yeah, I kind of see it as an, as an overlay dream or um, – maybe a symbol of what's happened. Symbol is not a good word. Overlay is the best interpretation I can kind of offer for that. I, that's really interesting. I, uh, I haven't thought of, of that before. Hey, Nicole, we finally have somebody who is raising their hand. Can we, uh, can we awesome. set aside our uh, yes. typical dreams and, and pick up a call? Um, sure. So, yeah, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to answer the person who's got their hand up um, over here in the call list, and it's area code uh, 313. It's area code 313. You are on the air. Hello. Hi. Who am I talking to? My name is Vaughn Robert. How are you guys doing tonight? Hi, Hi Vaughn. we're doing good. We hope I, you're doing uh, well. I am. Um, I'm actually a uh, fellow blog talk show uh, host as well, like you guys. I actually got on you guys <laughs> searching. Yeah, through you know how you go on the dashboard mm-hmm. and you see the people who follow you. They show the other shows. Well, I actually come across. I know of N5D through uh, Facebook. There's uh, uh-huh. it's one of the pages that I liked, and it came across when I saw you guys on Facebook. You know, on Blog Talk. I was like, I need to get on that right there. 
but this, but <laughs> right now you guys are in my Kool Aid right now on this on this stream <laughs> thing because you know I'm, I'm one of those guys who we were speaking about earlier in the show who uh, act for a long time. I mean, this is like recent history. I couldn't, I didn't remember dreaming, if, even if I would dream, if even if I was dreaming. But until recently, um, I just recently, I, I'm starting to know at least that I'm dreaming. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, I just, I just, I just finished my show a couple of hours ago, and I was, I was saying something about uh, what I, I don't know where I got this from, but I, when I went to sleep, when I go to sleep sometimes now, I, um, I say I want to, like a couple of days ago, I was like, I want to constantly remember my dream and this actually meaning. But uh, I, I remember in one dream this, this week, um, somebody handed me a book. I don't remember who it was. But I, I remember it was a, I think it was a man figure, and somebody was handing me a book, and it's actually sitting in front of me right now. But I, it looked exactly like it looked. Now I hadn't seen the book in like four or five years, you know, some through some travels and stuff that I was doing. And the book is called um, "How God Changes Your Brain," <laughs> and I was able to get into it. Yeah, I was able to get into it. This past week, about just like ten pages, and I read it a little bit about five years ago. And but it's, it's what I'm trying to get at is really I'm, those dreams are starting to something is speaking to me through the dream, you know, like your higher self. Yeah. But even when I couldn't remember my dream, I was still at the point where right before I wake up, I could hear or feel something giving me clear instruction like a breakthrough of some kind. I may be having a little bit of trouble understanding something or whatever the case may be, might be going through something, and it's while I'm sleeping, though. Yes. You know, I'm, 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 kind of the, I'm kind of the mindset that right now we're actually asleep. It's like we're in the Matrix or like <laughs> uh, uh, or Avatar. Like mm-hmm. we're in that right now. When we go to sleep, it's when we disconnect from that machine and we go to our – our true place of uh, where we are uh, actually are, you know, because, you know, it's yeah. all of this as within, so without, on, you know, your five senses are pretty much nothing more than interpreters for what's going on with inside of us, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. the dream, I don't, I, I don't know exactly, I don't know exactly how it, you know, the awakening process is like that for different people. So can I ask, so you had a dream uh, that you received a book, and the book was about dreaming? No, no, it was about how God changes your brain. I remember oh, the Oh, changes book. your I brain? Okay. Yeah, okay. how God changes your brain. What it basically speaks to, as soon as you contemplate yes. anything, God, you, your brain automatically starts to make new dendrites and, and, and neuron connections and things of this nature. Hmm. So that, There's that actually... in and of itself makes it so. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it seems like there's a lot going on there. Yeah, you know, it's always something like that with me. <laughs> uh, so I got to go to work in a little bit, but I wish you know, to me, I would, I'm, I'm actually endeavoring to get to a point where I don't have to actually do that. I can just sit around and do this all day long. <laughs> do stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's the stuff, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm actually enjoying where I'm, where I'm working at right now, and I'm working at a plastic factory. I mean, I'm enjoying it, you know, but I would. what really drives me, what really gets me is the stuff I talk about on my show, you know, the the mystery, the knowledge, and the search, the, the stuff like that. Vaughn, what's, get, give your show a plug. What's the name of your show? Oh, man, my show is One in the Spirit. Uh, I'm on twice One a week as I speak. Yeah, mm-hmm. One in the Spirit. Well, well, thank you for telling us what your show is. What kind of things do you talk about? Well, on the Sundays, you were actually the, the, it's one in the spirit because it talks about the interconnectedness of all things. I just okay. bring it in, bring it mm-hmm. to the full. I just bring it all to that central point through different subjects. Like on Friday night is what's called the Friday night hangout, where I'm talking about all kind of different stuff. I'm in the Book of Enoch, the Lost Book of Enki. I'm talking about Spiritual physics by Dr. Stephen Needler. Uh, things from the some of the the, uh, the 
uh, what is it called? The dialogue of the hidden hand, where it's, talk, it's talking about the infinite one becoming aware of itself, seeking to experience itself, and the one infinite creator is born, stuff of that nature. But on Sundays, I talk about things that are centered around the law of attraction and how we're actually the one, we're the author of it. And we, we, it is us, it's extensions of what we are. We're always using it. I always say on there that. The secret wasn't a secret. The secret is technically uh, uh, great marketing because the real secret is yeah. that we're actually doing what they say in the law of attraction at every measurement, at every measurable increment of time. It just we didn't know what we were doing, you know. So yeah, somewhere it around like that, was, yeah. huh? It sounds like it sounds like your dream. You know, if, if you if if that's a lot of what you're talking about, the law of attraction and. Um, and you know, creating your your own world in that way, that's what your dreams are showing you too. Um, in a way, it was kind of showing you that you made that next step. So now you can begin to remember more. Uh, it is a little bit more like a, a premonition type of dream. Um, yeah. It kind of shows you that you're in sync with things. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful thing right there. You know, cause they, mm-hmm. they, they line up like that nowadays beautifully. I mean, everything they just lay down like, and, yeah. like I don't know I, exactly. I don't know exactly when I got on the idea. I got it from somewhere. I just don't remember where I got it from. Where <laughs> you ask the you ask the dream to speak to you. Because I'm, I'm for some long time I couldn't like. If I don't even know if I do dream, you know. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, even the title of your book, huh? Yeah. Even the title of the book in the dream, you know, that pre- represents source knowledge, source understanding, yeah. insight, and intuition, and, and inspiration, and ideas. Um, there, there's so much information in what might seem just like a short little dream. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I, I, you know what, I'm, I'm a little bit, I get excited. You, you see that <laughs> commercial on TV nowadays where there's like it's an IT commercial where there's like 100 people, it's a little cartoon. There's the one person hollers out, there's a door. And everybody tries to go through the little bitty door at the same time and they start crashing at each other. <laughs> it's like that with me a little bit. But all oh, you know, I might be studying like astrology. Next thing I know, you say, numerology, y'all, what's that about? And, you know, I'm over that way. Next thing I know, I'm looking at planets. And next thing I know, I'm looking at dreams. Next thing I know, I'm looking at spirits. You know, it's, I'm like that. I try to bite them like I'm a greedy kid at a, at a buffet table. Yeah, trying to bite on everything, but it's, it's getting better now. Now I, I, I like to call it nervous energy, <laughs> where <laughs> the nervous energy where I'm actually able to. I, I like guess I guess it would be like Michael Jordan said, you know, it's the point when you're in the game, and every, yeah. even everybody's going fast, but it's slow for you. It's starting to get like that. For me. Yeah, you know no, you I, I totally understand, and understand that everything is good. So yeah, it's just all good. But I like I I mean I've like looked at you guys. I just joined I just started following you guys this past week when I found you. I was looking at the uh, checking the stats on my show, I was like, Oh, they on the night <laughs> And before I go to work. I called an I called an astrology show the other day <laughs> and I was at work on a machine. Oh, I'm at work, I can't speak all night, ain't nobody around, talk to me. <laughs> so Uh oh. I'm all over the place with this thing, man. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're really, um, you know, all the different interests that you have probably make for a very interesting dream world for you. I know, you know, that's yeah. one of the reasons that, uh, you know, I make sure I don't watch TV and I don't watch the scary movies and everything. But, you know, you know, studying astronomy and studying some of these other things when you when you start immersing yourself in them, you know, these guys are the kinds of things that can and and often do show up uh, show up in our dreams, you know, what we feed ourselves and and think about during the day. Um very often can show up at night and we can uh, explore those concepts and some of that world, uh, you know, without the encumbrance of, you know, physicality and having a body. I mean, you can just take yourself through space, you know. <laughs> you can go uh, visit a nebula or something like that. Um, I, you know, it, it can be can be an amazing uh, opportunity for, uh, you know, breaking out and, and having a, and really some great adventures. Well, thanks so much for calling in, Vaughn. You know, there's a lot of different um, – 
shows and hosts here on In 5D, the Cosmic Awakening, and some of the other the other shows. I, I hope you uh, I hope you come back. Oh, of course, I'm a follower, so whenever you guys come on, I'm, I'll know about it. <laughs> Well, well thank nice you so much you. for thank you so much for calling in, and I love that. I may have to go look that uh, that book up. Uh, How God changes your brain. Thanks so much for calling in, Vaughn. Yes, ma'am. Plug his mind, ma'am. You you have a great evening. Thank you again. You too. Well, how that fun was, fun. was that, Nicole? <laughs> how God it, it amazes your brain. <laughs> yeah. And it was just interesting listening to him talking about, you know, like look at all the synchronicity that he was referencing yes. in his life. Um, mm-hmm. There is something that he mentioned, you know, it seems like there was kind of the shift that happened, um, and he just seems to be remembering them more now than he used to. Uh, mm-hmm. That's true on, on many levels. It seems uh, since about December 2015, uh, we've gone through this, the shift, I would say an astrological uh, shift, if you want to look at it from that perspective, um, where the time is here. We are more conscious. Uh, those channels are open, and it's, people's switches have just been flipped into the on position, so you better be ready. But it's an exciting mm-hmm. time, too, because it kind of tells you that, that, you're, in, that you're stepping into that new world. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think that also brings up an important point of looking at dreams with children because kids tend to have more scary dreams. And Mm -hmm. that is just because uh, they feel more vulnerable, uh, you know, as as a child. Uh, Your your world that you live in is a little smaller. But um, I, I think it's important for parents to be able to help their kids by talking through the dream. Um, I remember my daughter telling me about her dreams one night, and she said, she was probably about six, she says, you know when you go to sleep at night and you just kind of walk around town? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you do that? It just fascinated me. Uh, it sounded like she was astral projecting. And she's like, oh, yeah, I can go wherever I want to go, and I'm walking around town. And uh, they just take things for granted so easily. They don't. You, we don't need to explain the mechanics of dreams to them. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just another way of them adjusting into their environment. You know, babies sleep all the time. Um, why is that? It's because there's still an integration of the soul that's happening at that point. Uh, they're still learning a lot more on the other side. Uh, and as, they, as the physical body grows, um, they can adapt into this life easier. It's not just that, okay, you're the moment of birth, and here you are in all your full glory, uh, it's a process. You you enter that way, and you also exit that way. And a lot of the dreams that we have prepare us for the eventual exit of our life. So when you have a dream mm-hmm. about, um, you know, maybe dying or somebody else dying, uh, some of it is just practice. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow or in the next week. Scare yourself with it. But mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times we don't know what to tell kids when, when they have a you know bad dream about the boogeyman. Right, right. Yes, it's that's you know that's a really really good point that you know a lot of times what you're doing is you're giving yourself a safe arena to contemplate these things, even if they aren't imminent. It's it's a way of of making yourself feel either prepared or sovereign or strong, you know. So Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, another layer, another way of looking at it. Absolutely. And and don't forget the love factor either. You know, what what is it, as a mom, what's the first thing you do? is You put your arms around your child and you're like, it's okay, I love you. Um, That's all that Mm -hmm. they need. You know, Mm -hmm. whatever the disturbing part of the dream was, was just something that made them maybe feel threatened or, uh, you know, maybe just not feeling as loved, you know, at school or uh, love will fix so many different things. Everything. (laughs) Sure. If you come to a place of love, then you don't have to have the rest of the information necessarily. I mean, how many, how many stories how many dreams how many movies how many things have we have we you know had 
offered to us shown to us in this in this way whether it's a dream world or not that if it if it's threatening you if it seems big if it seems looming if it seems you know like it's accosting you rather than being fearful of it rather than fighting it if you try uh sending it understanding and love very often it just melts you know right in front of you it It just disintegrates and then it's no longer a threat for you um, you know, it's, it's the dream world, the dreamscape is a great place to work these kinds of kinds of things out. So I, I want to tell you about a dream I had just a couple nights ago. Um, uh, it was an auditorium dream, so I expected Dolores to be there. And it was the biggest auditorium uh, that I'd ever been in. It was like a Super Bowl kind of auditorium. And it was packed. I mean, it was so packed. Everybody was in the seats. Everybody was, um, you know, on the steps. And it, it, there was a few um, quantum healing practitioners, um, you know, that uh, were coming in at the very end. And we were, at, like, the very top. At the very, you know, we were getting like the last few spaces. There weren't even proper seats anymore, but we were just yeah. squeezing in, you know, like right in before the fire code, you know, people were going to shut yeah. the door and lock everyone else out. And the and the place was just bursting. And, and it was like the whole entire audience, uh, you know, auditorium was, was holding their breath. And it was like the whole auditorium itself was breathing. And we all were kind of waited. It was, it was all, we were all like holding our breath waiting. And I don't know if it was like Dolores, Dolores Cannon and, um, and others, or if it was just going to be her. And, and it was really quiet and we were just, we were early. (laughs) We were just early. I think that is, and yeah, Dolores wasn't there yet. So, I mean, I'm fully expecting to have this dream either again or next time yeah. when she does come out or when something happens, but really nothing happened. It was like we were all yeah. waiting, but there wasn't anything quite there yet. Now, how would you interpret that dream? <laughs> well, the, fir- the first thing that comes to mind is just, you know, the theater, the auditorium, that it's the audience, uh, but also it's a place to gather. So, you know, think of it as a convention. I think that you connected with other people in the same place, whether maybe they remember, you know, dreaming of the auditorium at the same time or not. But in a way, in that realm, whatever world you're in, we're all connected. Or or you Mm -hmm. connected with with other practitioners, other healers, other energy workers. Um, Mm -hmm. And to me, the silence part is just that we're just waiting, just waiting for the right Mm -hmm. moment. Everybody's prepared. Everybody's ready. Um, And the fact that, you know, Dolores didn't show up yet in the dream, that it was still coming, shows you that there's still Mm -hmm. a little work to be done. There's still a little time, (laughs) time left. But I just think Mm -hmm. of it as a gathering place. Mm -hmm. And, And that's how you experienced it. Somebody else might have experienced it in a very different way. I, you know, I have, it's, it's not, for me, this auditorium is, is so familiar. Um, I don't know if you read the book, um, The Application of Impossible Things, Natalie Sudman's uh, incredible book. Um, I have not. If you, oh, if you haven't, I, I so recommend this book. It's very, it's very thin. It's also very cerebral. It, it, you, you must read it slowly. There's so much in I mean, there's not one wasted word in that entire book. It's, it's all about um, her magnificent near-death experience that she had. Uh, she was in Iraq and, and was, in, um, uh, was in a vehicle that uh, went over a, uh, a bomb you know in the in the road wow. and she she, she was uh, transported to this place and what i love about hers and there's so many fabulous uh you know we're kind of getting off track a little bit here but it, it really does play into the auditorium thing um dream world and she you know she was sent to this auditorium it, in a split second in her near-death experience she spent you know mm-hmm eons of, of otherworldly time in, in, in part in great measure in this auditorium. And um, so anyway, I highly, highly, highly recommend her book uh, because it's so different from other NDE stuff 
there's great NDEs out there that talk about the emotional heart connectedness, this, you know, the, the, the love tsunami thing that happens when, when people kind yeah. of, you know, leave their bodies and come back. But what I love about Natalie's is it's none of that. It's none of that at all. Yeah. She, she, she very cerebrally looks at the information that was given and, and there's some very funny parts to it and there's some very endearing parts, but there's not a lot of, that kind of lovey fluff stuff that um, yeah. that I, I find can be, I mean, because let's face it, NDEs, my gosh, they're, of course they're emotional, you know, and then and, and they can be, but I think some of the writing out there is, is well, at least for my own personal taste, can be, be, be yeah. a little much like that. But, uh, but the auditorium itself seems to be this, um, this place of expansion and this place of coming together and sharing of information, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm always very excited when, you know, for me, recognizing I'm at the auditorium, um, always, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, that's why your own some, something. <laughs> yeah, that's why your your own interpretation of what that means is so important. I think we have somebody that uh, is in the chat room that being on hold. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Let's see. MJ. Okay. MJ, your MJ is wanting to talk. MJ, remind me what your your um area code is. Press 1 and it, it if you press 1, MJ, you will uh remind me what your area code is. I think she is she's the 970 um area code, but I'm not sure. <laughs> She's pressing one in the chat room. MJ, yep. you have to press it on the phone. You're the nine seven zero. Okay, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, here we have our friend and colleague MJ Allinger. Hi, MJ. Hi. Hi, Hi, Hi sweetie. <laughs> So good to hear Great your show. voice, MJ. Thank you for yes. calling in and for being here always. Yes, thank you. I have a a reoccurring dream that um, I would like for you to give your spin on interpretation. And the dream is I travel. I'm always traveling. And part of the travel, <clears throat> I do some teaching. But when I go to um, to go to find my room at the hotel, I don't have a clue. Okay. Um, and the other part of that with the whole travel thing, <clears throat> it occurs constantly that I can't find my airline tickets. Okay. Anything else about the dream? Um, and... Well, it's, this is kind of bits and parts, but there's some reoccurring um, to the point where I think it's at a certain time and I get there and um, I have to wait for the next plane. <laughs> okay. Um, it's it's, well, I'll, it's, it's I'll, frustrating because I, I can, in my dream, I look down and I'm, I'm just trying so hard to see what my room number is. I think I have the key. that right there, that right there kind of sums up the the frustration part of the dream. So there's a okay. couple different ways I would look at it. Um, the first part is you're traveling. Uh, so the same way that I was saying earlier that we're actually out doing things, we're participating in other experiences. So uh, given that you're a practitioner too, you're just teaching on a different level. A hotel in your dream would be someplace temporary, temporary accommodation, right? Somewhere where you mm-hmm. just kind of hold over for a moment. Um, the interesting part comes in is when you keep trying to find your ticket or you keep trying to find your way, uh, literally you're just trying too hard. You just have to kind of ease up on it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you have to, um, if you think about, you know, airline what an airplane would represent. Uh, the ticket would be access to flight, access to traveling great distances. So it's not you're just getting in your car. You're actually traversing great amount of, a great amount of space. Um, but that, yeah, you're, maybe you're 
physical subconscious is trying just a little too hard to get you to where you need to be. Um, and that's part of what you're learning on the other side, too. So there's a duality to it. It's your teaching and you're being taught at the same time about, you know, how, how do you integrate, how do you, how do you find that balance between both worlds? Well, that's interesting because um, two specific personal QHHT sessions, um, as soon as, you know, well, I don't even go to the cloud. I go right to source. Yeah. And I'm out of body. And there was two sessions that I did not want to come back into body. Okay. And I and I'm wondering if this is related, triangulated somehow. I think hmm. so. When you talk about that, what comes to mind for me is that you have a way of accessing source directly that maybe in a way you don't necessarily need some of the steps along the way. But because you're having the experience as as the person that you are, maybe part of that is learning that even though I have access to everything, it's still important to follow the process, to go through the steps because it's the journey and not necessarily the destination. Um, so you would definitely look at that in relation to, you know, what's going on in your, in your life, you know, big picture of, of where do you feel the flow of, of your life and, and your interests are going um, but yeah, you have to look at the the hotel aspect. It's just it's a t- temporary space. Um, mm-hmm. So by not finding you know the ticket or not finding your room, it's almost in a way kind of forcing you to explore that area a little longer than just going directly to the room. Um, so it keeps you in that space too. So mm. Does that kind of make make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the fact well, that it's reoccurring it's just, is important. Ever so yeah, often, it's just, you know. If this were my dream, um, I might, you know, uh, you, I kind of got a visual when you were talking about the room that you know you finally get to the hotel, but but you don't know, you know, where your room is, and you you were starting to say something about looking at your key. You're looking at your key, but you can't see anything. Was mm, that? Yes. yes. Interesting. So so the visual I got was, you know, that there's this there's this place, you know, this and I like I like Nicole's sense of it, this temporary place, uh, with all of these, you know, let's say cubicles or options or rooms. And uh, you know, you're just not sure which one is yours, but it's very kind yeah. of impersonal, you know? It's like an impersonal mm-hmm. place. But it's yes. this, it's this in, in personal place where you you know you know you need to be temporarily, but but you're not seeing even where that is right then. And um, inter- that's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's like a phase. You, is, do you ever have any variations on on the dream, MJ? Does does what changes with it if it ever changes? Um. It's usually in an you know an intense few seconds as you know they fly by, but it's such intensity. It's hmm. um, I don't panic, it, but it's um, that's that's usually the dream itself. Is there any color in the dream? Mm. Do you ever do you ever recall any color? Um, mm, green. There's shades of green when it's the hotel, but when it's to the airport, it's like I'm going through this great big tunnel, and you got to go through this security, and it's all charcoals and different shades of yeah. grays and blacks and stuff. Okay, because so, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I was, it's kind of guided to ask the color question. You know, because green we associate so much with a heart, um, but it can mean so many different things. Um, it could be you know um it, it's a very spiritual color and the fact that that you're going through the tunnel so to speak and uh mm-hmm. you know when we think about the, the light at the end of the tunnel 
uh, to me, that mm-hmm. would be the, the source part of, of what you connect with. The, the gray mm-hmm. colors would perhaps be, in a way, maybe the dream is helping you to navigate through fears or um, concerns or or the, the unknown factor. Um, you know, Candace said, you know, about these different choices, these different options. In a way, you're, you're trying to navigate your way through that to to overcome those things or to work your way through it. Um, but, you know, gray represents balance, too. It's right in between black and white. So mm-hmm. in a way, you're exploring all these different mm-hmm. things to facilitate balance in your life and um, and also facilitate the balance between between the worlds that you encounter that way. Oh, that makes sense. What I really love, though, is, I mean, you're, you're moving. You're all, you're, you're trying, you know, you're trying, you're moving, you're going, yeah. you're making plans, mm-hmm. you're, I mean, you know, you're not stuck anywhere. You know what I mean? You're, you're on the move. move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. are on the move. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, I have, another, for... I have another dream I need help with. Oh, good. And I, Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to have to be very general. Okay. Um, because it involves um, a person. And this person that shows up is of the the male side of life, and when he shows up in the dream, it, it's always like in a guardian type of. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like we're just we kind of pass in the night, not literally, but whatever's occurring, um, he's calling without being verbal. I don't know how else to say this. Um, But it's such a comforting feeling. But the person that shows up in the dream is an actual person that's living currently. Okay. Okay. Um, so the fact that you feel very, the comfort part of the dream, to me that would show that you're connecting with some type of guide aspect, uh, some type of of sense of that. Um, the reason that there's, the person looks familiar to you and the way that you can interpret that is what would that person represent to you? So one is, you know, what, what's the relationship, you know, between you and that person, uh, mm-hmm. And also, what's their character? When when you think about them, how do you perceive them? How do you perceive their their views and their values and their character? Um, and see how that person is reflecting something in yourself. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I can only use an example. There's a, sometimes when you dream those those very comforting, familiar familiar people in your dreams, it's almost like there's yeah. a connection in the eyes or there's just a very deep sense of knowing that comes yes. with it. Um, yes. It doesn't always necess- – sometimes it's just being in the space, sharing the space. But they're trying to maybe tell you something about the the person that, that you're being seeing reflected back at you. So that's kind of a good starting point is how do you perceive this person um, yeah. How how do you view them? And, and then that's a really good that's a that's a really good point, Nicole. Because you know there's and there's there's arguments against you know this next statement I'm going to say, but it's 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 valuable to always think of it this way, which is every dream you ever have, even if another person is in there, another character or something else is going on, it's all about you. It's all about you. So you yeah. know this person whoever that may be, this character, you know, what, what is it about that person that, that quality of that person that's either, you know, in exactly. you, that you would like to be in you, that you wish to be in you, that, you know, maybe wanting to come forth from you, et cetera. So I think that's, that's a really good way of, you know, considering yeah. why a person like that might show up. Yeah. And I agree with that because you're the one having the dream. <laughs> so, so you you have to look at it from that perspective. Is how does that apply to me? 
Um, it doesn't mean that you're selfish or, or that, you know, you can look at the other aspects after that. But the same with QHHT. We look at, at characters or people in our lives the same way. What do they reflect back to ourselves? Because you're, everything is about perception. Another person is going to experience um, the same individual in a very different way. The, nobody sees another person the same way that you do. So it is important to you know, to the self aspect of that. Well, uh, is it when people experience a similar scenario, are, is it our subconscious that are drawing that uh, genre of personality into our dream? I don't think they're drawing their personality into the dream. Maybe in the way that you're asking the question, I just see it more as, there's something relevant about that character. You know, what, what's the two or three main things that stand out to, to you? Um, mean about the person? The, the other thing that, that is also interesting when you look at that is if it's somebody of the opposite sex, usually that represents your subconscious if you look at dream symbolism. So if you're dreaming of somebody of the same sex, that would be representative of more of your conscious state of mind. So yes, in that way, it is your subconscious reaching out to you, uh, but it's it's a little more. It's a little more than that. Is it a um, counterbalance? I would think it's a way of of supporting you. Yes. Um, you, you know, sometimes when we see people that we know in our dreams, we we tend to, um, and I'm not saying this is in this case, but sometimes we over um, dramatize things. Is we add the emotion and everything else in it because we know that person. You know, in some cases, very intimately. You have to be able to step away and say, okay, on the surface, let me start there. What would that person represent? Uh, it's just mm-hmm. another aspect, another aspect of you. But okay. um, you sometimes they represent very beautiful attri- attributes or talents um, mm-hmm. that we don't see in ourselves. And your your dream exactly. is a way of introducing that to you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and this person, um, you know, may be uh, someone in your life or someone that you know. There, You know, there may be something about them that you either – you know, very much admire or there's something about, you know, their strength or or something like that, you know, something that you connect with that you might like to see, uh, you know, more developed in yourself or more brought out in yourself or something like that. I mean, that's certainly one yeah. way of looking at it. At least it gives you, you know, a, a beginning place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'd be, and I know, have people one be- last question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you guys are really good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, and that is, and I hope the listeners are benefiting as well. Um, there was another dream that I would have, and it even through childhood, every so often, and it was about um, a horse. You know, I didn't live on a farm or anything, but it was a horse, and a beautiful black horse. And I'd be like getting busy and all of a sudden in my activities, it would be days later, I'd discover, oh my gosh, who's taking care of my horse? (laughs) And it was neglected. So I took that as I was uh, perhaps neglecting or not paying attention to my own type of spirit? Yeah, or something within you, very powerful in you, something very powerful in you that needed running or expression or something. Or, But, you know, that it was black. I mean, that's interesting, yeah. too. That could possibly be, I mean, one way of looking at that is shadow self, you know. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that was another That thing. mysterious yeah. side of you. Yeah. yeah. I wonder so, if there's a past life connection with that, too. Uh, you know, the worrying right. about whether the horse is taken care of, of that. Um, 
but yeah, the color would would be. I learned something interesting recently in a QHHT session um, about colors and how they represent different emotions. Um, and so many times we try to separate emotions out. We we try to you know pull them apart, mm-hmm. and you really can't. It's mm-hmm. like the rainbow. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they they all they all kind of flow into each other, and all together they make white. Um, so maybe the absence of something you know would, would be the opposite. That would be the black part. Um, but yeah, to me, there's just a, a sense of, of strength and mystery about it. Um, but yeah, I really, I wonder if there's a past life connection, especially since you had it, you know, so early as, as a child when it started. Mm. Okay. Well, my my what affected me was I felt the animal. Um, I would never harm an animal. Let's just put it that way. So in my waking state, when I think about that dream, sometimes I just get Mm -hmm. teary-eyed because I thought I could never have neglected an animal. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That pushes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's not that's not that animal. That's you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. that's, That's something in you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. Well, it's just, my just having to take care I of yourself. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. You know, just the aspect but of something taking care of you. Yeah, okay. and, but something big and powerful. You know, something big and powerful. Again, movement. You know, there's there's move. You know, what can horses do? Horses can take you places in a hurry in a very powerful way. You know, and in a magnificent way. You know, this isn't a tortoise. Yeah. This isn't a, you know what I mean? I mean, this is a horse. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're magical creatures just on their own. Um, and, you know, you know, ask me. I've got a, a few just right outside the window <laughs> right here. And I'm so <laughs> in love with them. But they, um, you know, but that, I, that's, I love that dream. Of, of all the three that, that you shared, I absolutely love hearing this one. MJ, thank you so much for for calling in and letting Nicola and I uh, uh, go to town on your dreams. You know, uh, we can only interpret them from our own perspective and uh, take, take all of what you heard uh, for what that's worth. And, and it may or may not be on the money for you, Uh, uh, you know, sit with it for a while and let us know. Well, I think the two of you, your perspectives and your knowledge has really helped tremendously helped me look at it perhaps in a different light as well and um, that's what this is all about you know so that's exactly i think that's quite makes us happy yeah sharing dreams like that you know even you know just at the breakfast table with your family sometimes if if you Mm -hmm. you know have a family or somebody like that that you can do um you know getting somebody else's perspective uh, you know, either solidifies your own idea or gives you a new way of, of looking at, at it that you might not have thought of, which is why I, I absolutely love um, doing this this dream analysis. And, and I've had a really great, great time doing this with you, Nicole, tonight. We're kind of running out of time. Yeah, okay. this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. Um, I just want to kind of add to you with, with uh, you know the horse, and when you look at animals in your dreams, same way as people, you you can always look into the uh, you know spirit animal you know interpretation or mm-hmm. meaning of it. But the same, yeah, what is the characteristics of who shows up in your dreams? Mm-hmm. Yep, great, great dream, great dreams indeed. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, MJ, and thanks all of you uh, who called in tonight and who've been sitting in the chat room and those of you who might listen to this show in the future. And thank you so much, Nicole, for being here. Please tell our listeners again how they can find you in the future. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, They can reach me on my website. It's www.naturalpathways.co. And I'm also on Facebook. Uh, They can find the link that way. And I I absolutely enjoyed tonight's show, and I'd love to do it again. So, yeah, um, <laughs> good. I hope people well, start I would exploring. Love, 
I would love to do more dreamscape shows as well. And uh, again, I'd like to remind those of you out there looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method, you can find them at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. Our wonderful call in there at the end of the show is MJ Allinger, and she's in northern Colorado for those of you in that area of the country. Quite a fine lady and practitioner in her own right, doing some incredible research for us. Um, on our original Dolores Cannon support forum. We're going to hear more about that in the future. And you can find out more about my own practice of QHHT and other services at newearthjourney.com. And I also have a New Earth Journey radio show, Bi-Weekly Tuesdays. So please join us again for the next Quantum Healing with Candace show. That's going to be on February 12th. And QHHT practitioner and homeopathy specialist, Carol Neary, will be joining us that evening with some really interesting stories. And you're not going to want to miss that show. So until then, thanks again for being here. Um, Sleep well, sweet dreams, and many blessings to you all. Good night, everyone.